Why don't speakers use electromagnets? This was close to yesterday's question. We were talking about how we need high current amps to drive speakers. So some of what I'll cover today you might check with yesterday's video uh, as we talked about amp amplifiers and current. Anyway, this question comes from Gregory in Greece. Ah, lovely country. My son Sean is in Greece right now looking for people to help him uh, with his uh, musical. He's writing a musical about the Iliad. If you remember Homer's Iliad, probably one of the most famous stories ever written. And, and my son Sean is over <coughs> uh, writing the music and getting people organized. And if you're, if you're interested, by the way, uh, Sean's a, a wonderful uh, person. I love that kid. And if you're interested in, in helping Sean out with uh, producing the Iliad, which uh, nobody's actually done as a musical, uh, just uh, write me, paul at psaudio.com, and I'll get you in touch with Sean. He's, uh, he's, a, neat, he's a neat young man. Um, so Gregory writes, can you please give some info about speaker drivers that use electromagnets instead of regular magnets? Since they do not deteriorate with time, uh, why are they not more common in audio applications? What are the advantages and disadvantages of electromagnets in loudspeakers? Well, I kind of picked this question because I, I, we get asked this a bit. And maybe it's just my own ignorance, but I don't know of any driver or any speaker that uses electromagnets. Now maybe there are some that I'm just being ignorant, but if there are, they certainly aren't very common. So let's talk about the subject itself, so we're kind of on the same page. An electromagnet is basically a coil of wire that we put an electrical voltage into, usually a DC volt a voltage. The, and, and it creates a magnetic field. Okay, and a permanent magnet is a piece of iron or neodymium or, or ceramic or ferrous. There's some kind of ferrous material that we have hit really hard with a magnetic pulse, <clears throat> and that magnetic pulse aligns all the electrons in this iron in one direction and creates a permanent magnet. And permanent magnets can lose their magnetic attraction over time, but I don't think it's a problem worthy of, 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 of thinking about. I mean, I have drivers from 50 years ago. They're just going just as strong as they ever were, and so <clears throat> maybe over time you're going to lose some magnetic field, but I don't think it's really an issue. <clears throat> so the way a speaker works is you have a permanent magnet, this hunk of iron, let's say, and then you have a coil of wire, and the electrical signal, the musical signal, is placed in the coil of wire. It becomes a magnet, and it opposes and is attracted to the permanent magnet, and so the cone moves in and out to the rhythm of the electrical energy. Now, what he's proposing is instead of having a permanent magnet, why wouldn't we have an electromagnet? Because that will never wear out. Well, I don't really see the advantage. First off, as I mentioned, permanent magnets don't really lose their power over any reasonable amount of lifetime that we're going to be concerned with. Secondly, a electromagnet takes energy and creates heat. I mean, one of the problems we deal with with speaker drivers is heat. We have to, in our, in our drivers, we use two inch and three inch voice coils in order to, to be able to dissipate enough heat. And if you're adding more heat by putting in this electromagnet, I think you're gonna wind up having nothing but trouble. So I, 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 I think it's, it's an interesting idea. I don't think it's one that has a lot of practical applications. So that's, that's the best I got for you. Great question. Thank you for asking it, and uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow.